All right, today I am building a computer. So this is gonna be an awesome machine. So let's start with the motherboard. It looks like this is Wi-Fi antenna. We have, wow, actually we're still using CDs. Manual, stickers, zip ties, SATA connectors, which is good. Some screws, like rubber mounts. Okay. There we go. <laughs> we got a Supreme FX chip right here. That's pretty fancy. And on the back. So we got the four USB 3.0 ports. We got two USB 2.0 ports. And we got our BIOS port right here. So whenever we go to update the BIOS, we're gonna use this one. So I'm using a Ryzen 7 5800X. This is a dual channel memory processor. With that, I'm using four sticks of Corsair Vengeance Pro. Now, because this is a dual channel memory processor, it wouldn't matter at all if I was using two sticks or four sticks as far as the speed goes. I could alternatively use two sticks of 16 gigabytes to get the 32 gigabytes and the processor would treat it exactly the same. There we go. And it should just drop in, no problem. And we can lock this guy back down. And so that's set. Okay, so there are our nice four sticks of RAM. So even though these should be built as a set, I'm gonna treat these like individual pairs. So you can kind of see right here, it's written down B1, A1, B2, A2. We'll pull these levers up and drop it down. So you can kind of see what that looks like. I'm using the first slot and the third slot. Okay, so now we've got our M.2 drive and we're gonna be using the top slot. So this is a 970 Evo Plus. This is a great drive. And you may have to stick it in at kind of an angle just to get it started. Then it should just push in like that. And then we'll just take one of those screws that came with the motherboard and screw that down. And this does have a tiny little spacer. I'm gonna put that in first. I'm just doing that to get the spacing right. And screw it down so that it can properly transfer the heat. And then we've got our thermal pad ready to go. And that is pretty important because these things can get pretty hot. Okay. Now I personally prefer using air coolers over water coolers just because there's less problems that can occur. The only one that I want to use is Noctua. Now I have used other brands and other brands work perfectly well, but if you're looking for the absolute best air cooler that you can get, Noctua is the only way to go. As you're about to see, this guy, <laughs> this is the first one I've used that's in black Chrome Max. Now I usually prefer the Chrome look, the original Chrome look with the, with the brown and tan fans, but this one is my girlfriend's choice and yeah, it actually looks really cool. So nice packing. I'm gonna make sure that nothing's gonna get banged up. Did a really good job there. But look at that monster. That is really cool looking. So perfectly polished pad. The main reason I love Noctua is just because these things are perfectly silent. The only thing you could possibly hear is the air going through it. So it comes with a fan attached and we've got another fan if we want to attach a second fan. You can kind of see how these fans are attached. Give you these metal clips. So you just pop that up and then the fan can drop out. So nice and easy, no screws. Really toolless design. Not two of them, I mean, they know what they're doing. It's a fantastic company. All right, so, you know what? I actually am gonna have to take that fan out because that's the only way I can get to these screws. So, we'll just go ahead and pop that out right now. Not a big deal. All right, so now to get this attached to our CPU. comes with a little packet and it's got thermal grease in it. That's pretty cool. I'm used to using Arctic Silver. That's like been my, my go-to. But since they got this in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. I love the little install kits. It's like they just got everything. Oh, <laughs> they got a little metal badge on here too that you can throw in your case. So we got our thermal paste and this is actually a ton of thermal paste. We got two extra fan clips and we've got our header connectors. So they actually threw in an Allen key screwdriver. 
So if you don't have a screwdriver that will fit into this area, you, they got you covered. Now because this can work on Intel and AMD platforms, they included instructions for both and mounting hardware for both. So I'm gonna be using the AMD. And then right here we have all of our hardware. So this shows the hardware we're gonna be using. It says that the back plate is gonna be on the back of the motherboard. And that is, that's what this plate is right here. We're gonna be using these two mounting bars, these screws and these shims. So we're gonna take these four screws out. A lot of threads on these screws, which is good because that means it's, uh, that means there's a lot of points where it's gonna hold down. So you don't have to worry about this thing coming loose. So these are just gonna sit on top of those thread holes. We're gonna attach these plates. We're gonna use the four screws that were in that same bag with the spacers. And again, we wanna just tighten this down. It doesn't have to be super tight. We just wanna lock it down to make sure that it's not gonna uh, back out. Okay. So that is what it should look like. You can see they're, they're kind of angled in. We're on the top and bottom. Now we want to make this the cleanest possible surface that we can get so that there is no barrier between the processor and the heat sink. So we are going to clean it and we'll use isopropyl alcohol to do this. And the main reason I'm using a coffee filter instead of just a regular paper towel is because a paper towel could potentially drop flakes or uh, you know fibers onto the CPU. And like I said, we want this thing to have no barrier whatsoever. Coffee filters do not drop fibers because nobody wants fibers in their coffee. So this is a very common thing to use. And the reason we're using 99% is because we want this to dry quickly and leave no residue. All right, so now it is time for the thermal paste. Now the instructions on here say to apply a dot in the center that's four to five millimeters in diameter. Now four to five millimeters in diameter is a little bit much in my opinion. I'm used to the old, uh, just the size of a grain of rice. There we go. And I wanna try to screw these in without rocking it around. So as little movement as possible. And if it does move a little bit, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. All right, so we are good. So it's starting to thread on both sides. So I'm gonna try to thread them down evenly. So I like a few turns on one, a few turns on the other until I'm sure that they are locked down. Okay. Just like that. All right, so that's the hard part, and as you can see, it really wasn't that hard. So these fans are pretty cool. They actually tell you the direction that they're going to rotate. So it's gonna rotate like this, and it has arrows telling the way that the air is going to flow. So we wanna make sure that we're going to install it just like this. Just pull the clip, and it locks right in. Then for the other fan, we're gonna throw this on the front, because there's a little more space here. So we got two wires and we got two headers. I'm gonna use my middle fan as my first CPU fan. So that is gonna plug in just like this. All right, and then we'll take the other one and do the same thing. All right, so now we are built. So all we have to do is drop this in and plug everything together. So this is also an AMD build. This is an 8350. This is 10 years old. So this thing's been around for a while. Oh, look at that relic. Still good though. Like I'm gonna keep this. I'm probably gonna make another build, just like a, a simple, like a streaming build, something like that. So now let's put our new stuff in. But this is where getting a full ATX case can really come in handy because it just makes your life so much easier because there's so much more room in here. And especially like if you get a really big video card, you got plenty of room. You don't wanna tighten up all the screws. We just wanna get them in. And once we get all six of them in, then we tighten them up. I always advise against people using magnets, like magnetic tip screwdrivers, something like that. Most of the time it's gonna be fine. They do make screw starters, which are just things that will grab onto the tip of a screw. And it will allow you to stick that in without having to use magnets. So those things are great. And this is my USB plug. You can see it does say USB. And if you look on top, it might be kind of hard to see, but there is one pin that is filled in. Line up that solid one with where it's missing a pin. And then slide it in.
And then on the audio, it's got kind of the same thing. We have one socket filled in. And then over here, we'll just plug in our main power. And keep in mind, this always only goes in one way. And so you can't, you can't really flip it around. It only goes in one way. So the last thing is our main connector. And so you can see everything's already written on here. We got a uh, hard drive LED, reset switch. So I'll start with the speaker. And that is going to go on our farthest pin. On the other side of that, that's our power LED, but we have another option for power LED on this side, so you can use whatever you want. So I'm going to put in the plus first, and that's going to go on my nearest pin. And if you have trouble with this, you can always use needle nose pliers. They really come in handy. This is our power LED minus, so that goes right next to it. Hard drive LED. That plugs in right on the other side. And then we got our reset switch. And that goes right next to our hard drive LED. And then finally we've got our power switch. And that goes just on the other side of the reset switch. Okay, so that is the hard part of the wiring, getting all those little guys in. But it's not that bad. Okay, and now for the last piece of the hardware, I'm going to throw in my video card. And make sure that we drop those screws back in. So that is the full build. So now we just gotta power it on. F1 to configure. So the first thing I always want to check is the temperatures. Make sure that nothing is overheating. So CPU temperature is at 42 degrees Celsius. That is a perfectly acceptable temperature. I mean, 105 degrees Fahrenheit, it's pretty darn hot in this room in general. So uh, that's a completely acceptable temperature. Now this particular CPU, the 5800X, that can run at 80 or 90 degrees while it's under load. So uh, 40 degrees is no problem whatsoever. Everything there looks good. So, so I downloaded the newest BIOS from ASUS and I'm gonna plug that into the BIOS port in the back of the motherboard. There we go. And now I'm just going to select the newest one. And yes. <laughs> Do you really want to update it? Yes. Okay. So this does show that we have 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is great, so that means everything was red. We're going to AI Tweaker and then AI Overclock Tuner. We're going to turn this to DOCP. There we are. All right. We're going to save changes and reset. So you can see these are the changes it's going to do. It's going to change it to 3600 megahertz. It's going to change the CAS to 18. And most importantly, the DRAM voltage to 1.35. So it needs to increase the voltage in order to make that stable. So great stuff. So there we go. 3600 megahertz, 32 gigs. So now it's time to install Windows. So today I'm going to install Windows 11. And Amazon has a couple of different options for installing Windows 11. So it has a Windows 11 Pro downloader, which is what I've got right here. So as soon as you buy it, it gives you a link and the key. And it automatically puts that in your Amazon software section. So you can download it anytime you want to. So I downloaded it. It asked what you want to do with it. I said put it on this USB stick. So it downloaded the installer to this USB stick. Now I can plug this in and I can use it, but I can use it today. I don't have to wait for any shipping. I've got it right now. And what's also great about it is I can't ever lose the key. Like that key is linked to my Amazon account now. So I can go look that up anytime I want. I don't have to worry about losing this little thing, you know, that I'm going to put on a shelf and then I throw in the trash one day accidentally. This is always going to be on Amazon. So that's awesome. All right. And so we're going to hit F8 to choose where we're going to boot from. So this is my USB drive. And then it's going to set up just like any other version of Windows. So this is my new M.2 drive. So I'm just going to hit next. And now we wait. Some people like this in the middle. I personally don't, so I'm just going to go to taskbar settings and taskbar behavior, taskbar alignment. So I'm going to make this on the left. So now it's just like any other Windows machine. We got our start button on the bottom left. And uh, yeah, we're ready to rock. And this is that antenna that came with the motherboard. So I'm going to take these two plugs. 
and I'm going to plug them into the back. Let me just kind of thread in like uh, coax. So let's see if we can get anything. Oh yeah, it's picking everything up. Great, so uh, yeah, full bars too. And now we're going to download a ton of updates. And because the main thing that we just upgraded was the CPU and the RAM, I'm going to do a multi-core Cinebench. We got a score of 14683. So that's really, really nice. I mean, that beat out a Core i9 by a long shot. And keep in mind, this is super bare bones. There's no overclock. There's, uh, there's no, I didn't even install the drivers from AMD or Asus. This is bare bones Windows 11 install with only the Asus RAM profile. So that's it. I mean, just, this is a fantastic system. I'm very happy with that. So while it's running, our processor is getting to about 83 degrees Celsius. So that's not too bad. That's pretty normal. But the thing to keep in mind with that is it's doing that with air cooling. So this isn't even a water-cooled setup. So that's really the benefit of a Noctua air cooler. Like, these things are awesome. Okay, so right now I'm going to use a RAM disk to actually test this RAM. So I'm using IM disk to create a virtual hard drive using 16 gigabytes of the RAM. And here we can see where it's actually running at. So this is running extremely fast. And just as a reference, this is the same test being performed on an M.2, a Samsung 970 EVO Plus. So as you can see, RAM disks are extremely fast, but this Corsair RAM is particularly fast even amongst RAM. So yeah, that is an awesome build. I am very happy with the way that turned out.